fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Sheriff Jeb Jackson sat in the noonday sun in front of the building that housed his office and the jail. He watched with amusement as his oldest friend, Thornton Hobbs, crossed from the opposite side of the street. Hobbs owned the bank. He was the mayor of Longhorn and one of its most important citizens. He wore ornate boots with high heels, a pair of six guns, and a brand new sombrero of snowy whiteness. Hi there, Jeb. How do you like my new Stetson? <laughs> yeah, I, I've been expecting it. I was with you last week when that pilgrim told about seeing the Lone Ranger with a white hat. I knew right then that you'd blossom out in one. Now, Jeb. You can't fool me, Thornton. You get a look in your eyes when anyone spins a yarn about the Lone Ranger. Oh. Yeah, it's all right, Thornton. You couldn't pick a better man to copy after. <laughs> it's too bad you're not more like the Lone Ranger. Maybe you could find a way to make my prisoner do some talking. Jeb, you've got two prisoners locked in the cell. I was speaking of Red Fabian. Yeah, never mind him. What about the Indian you jailed last night? Ah, uh, he started a ruckus in the cafe. I jailed him for the usual 24 hours. Then he'll be released tonight, huh? Now, hold on, Thornton. Dad Busted, you heard that the Lone Ranger has a partner named Tonto. So you want an engine to work for you? Well, I, I need a man to help out my stable. I just thought... Ah, uh, forget it. This prisoner don't savvy a word of English. I tried to talk to him, and so's Red Fabian. Mm. Well, I'd like to talk... Try to talk to him? Not now. One visitor at a time is the ruling in this jail. Yes, visitor? No, but Red Fabian has one. It's the girl he aimed to marry. Fabian planned to get married? Yep. The girl's name is Millie Peabody. She and her brother have a ranch to the south of town. But Fabian's to hang for murder. Yeah. That's why I let him and his girl have a private talk. I'm sitting out here till they're through. Red Fabian and the dark-haired girl named Millie talked in low tones through the bars of the jail door. In a far corner of the cell, an Indian sat in stoic silence. No one suspected that it was Tonto, the Lone Ranger's friend, who had started a fight for the express purpose of being locked in the cell with a murderer. I don't like talking like this. Red, are you dead sure that Indian can't understand English? I made sure this morning, Millie. I put some gumdrops in front of him and told him there was poison to kill off rats. I figured he'd leave him alone if he was pulling a bluff. And he ate them? All of them. He'd hardly be smart enough to figure I was testing him. You can talk free. 
What are you and Jake doing to get me out of here? Red, we can't do a thing without money. There's plenty of money. Our last job brought in $2,000 in gold, as well as a lot of bonds and jewelry. Yes, but you took it all and hid it. You're the only one who knows where it is. It stays hidden until I get out of here. Now tell Jake to bring Scobie and the half-breed and bust me out of this jail. Scobie and the breed won't move until they get some cash. They're mad. They say they've helped on six stage holdups and they haven't been paid a dime. They understood the deal as well as you and Jake. We agreed to divvy up the cash and everything else when we had enough to quit. But Breed and Scobie... If we'd split after the first job, they'd have spent money like water. The law would have gotten suspicious and started questioning them. Then we'd have been through. They won't cash. Mm Mm-hmm. They'll get it when I'm free. They figure you made a big mistake in getting caught. Was it my fault that the bandana slipped down from my face so as I could be recognized? Well... I was lucky to get away long enough to hide what we got on the last job before the law caught up to me. Where'd you hide it? (laughs) I'm not telling. But, Red, you've got to tell me. I'll go there and get some of the gold, enough to satisfy the breed and Scobie. Then they'll help Jake break you out. <laughs> don't you trust me? No. Why, I you... don't trust anyone. If you four got your hands on the loot, you'll let me hang, so there'll be a four-way split instead of five. But me and Jake wouldn't double-cross you, Red. I'm taking no chances. Get me out of here, or you'll never see a cent of what we collected in these last few months. <laughs> That night, when Tonto had completed his 24-hour term in jail, he lost no time in getting out of town aboard his paint horse scout and heading toward the small, well-concealed camp of the Lone Ranger. Oh, scout, ho, fella. Ho, fella, ho. Tonto, you run into camp like a man who had something to report. Oh, that's right. It's plenty good idea to have me in jail with Fabian. Oh, what did you learn? Uh, Fabian, one of gang. There are three other men. Do you know who they are? One fella named Jake Peabody. Peabody. He's posing as a rancher south of town. He has a sister named Millie. Ah, girl named Millie come to jail. In a few words as possible, Tonto told how Millie had tried in vain to learn the secret of Red Fabian's hiding place and her insistence that cash must be handed over before the prisoner would be rescued by his partners in crime. When he had finished, he watched the Lone Ranger sit down on a log and gaze thoughtfully into the campfire. Presently, the masked man spoke in a low voice. Hello. I have an idea that might lead to the capture of Fabian's pals. And what that? They were caught in an attempt to break Fabian out of jail. Oh, them not do that. Unless Fabian tell where cash hid. If I could get $2,000 in gold coin. Well, where you get that much? The banker would have it, Tonto. I'll try to borrow it from him. I can offer security. Uh-huh. Get out the dungarees and that faded old shirt and the black hat. I'll dress as a cowhand for the banker. The banker enjoyed working around his stable and often spent his evenings there. Engrossed in the task of replacing a broken plank in one of the stalls, he didn't hear the horse that stopped outside or the steps of the man who entered the lamp-lit stable. Well, well, Holder. Jobs. Uh, oh, oh, sorry if I startled you. I didn't mean to. Well, I had expected, that's all. Who are you? What do you want? I want to borrow $2,000 in gold. What? I have some collateral. There's a considerable amount of silver in my saddlebags. And I can offer some shares of stock in a silver mine. Mm, I'll drop into my office tomorrow. I expect to be there the day after tomorrow to repay the loan and pick up the collateral. I don't do business here. Mr. Hobbs, it's an urgent situation. Well, I'm sorry, young man. Say, those guns are yours. May I see them? (laughs) Here's one of them. They're both alike. Hmm. Ivory grip. Beautiful. Beautiful. What balance. Where did you get your guns? I'd like to buy a pair just like them. Mine were specially made. Oh, I see. Have you ever been told that the Lone Ranger carries guns like yours? Oh, yes. Is that so? Of course, I don't know that to be a fact. I've never seen the Lone Ranger, but I've heard many stories about him. I doubt if anyone has guns like mine. But I have heard that my white horse resembles... A white horse? He's just outside the door. So I see. What do you call your horse? (laughs) Well, Mr. Hobbs, it may seem silly to you, but I call him Silver. Oh, nothing silly about it. If I had a horse like this, I'd use the same name. Oh, nice fellow. (laughs) So you're called Silver, huh, boy? You can't sell. Oh, not at any price. Uh, I can't say I blame you. Certainly like a horse like this. 
I'll open the saddlebags and show you the collateral I can leave with you for the $2,000 in gold. Young man, you've shown me the only collateral which I'm interested. What do you mean? Your horse and your guns. But I don't want to part with either. You'll get them back when you repay the loan. And I hope you never repay it. But I need a horse and a gun. In addition to the 2000 in gold, you may borrow my gun and any horse in the stable. But, Mr. Hobbs, I... have I... the gold in the safe right in the house. If you want to do business, you've heard my terms. Very well, Mr. Hobbs. It's a deal. Whoa, Blackie! Whoa, Blackie! Whoa, oh, now! Well, what happened, Kimasabi? Why you ride that horse? Why, what happened to Silver? He's visiting the banker. Easy, Blackie. I had to leave him as collateral, Tonto. You get gold? Yes. I'm taking it to Jake Peabody tonight. Oh, maybe you change clothes first. No, Tonto. I'll remain in this outfit. You go to town. Tell the sheriff to get his deputies and watch for an attempt to break Fabian out of jail. Me savvy. When Fabian hears that a stranger paid 2000 in gold to Jake Peabody, you wonder if the hidden loot has been found the sheriff lets him escape temporarily, I think he'll lead the way to his hiding place. Then the lawman can recapture him and the men who helped him escape. And the loot from several crimes will be recovered. Me tell the sheriff all that? Yes. If he wants to know where you got your information, give him this silver bullet and... <laughs> well, what matter? I forgot. Banker Hobbs has my gun belt and the silver bullets. Oh. Uh, never mind. Just pass the word to the sheriff. I think he'll act on it. He has a lot to gain and nothing to lose. Get going as soon as you have a saddle on Scout. Ah. I'm starting right now for the Peabody Ranch. Easy, Blackie, easy. All right, come on, Blackie! Wearing the gun and gun belt borrowed from Banker Hobbs and riding the banker's black horse, the Lone Ranger traveled in disguise to Peabody's ranch house. Whoa well, there, Blackie. Whoa, 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 easy. As he dismounted and went up the short flight of stairs to the veranda, the door opened and Jake Peabody stood in the doorway with his sister just behind him. Who are you? What do you want here? I'm looking for Jake Peabody. Why? You'll find out if that's your name. All right, that's my name. Now speak up. Oh, you must be the young lady who called on Red Fabian. What's it to you? You must have convinced him that he didn't have a chance of getting out of jail unless he paid off in advance. Uh, you'd better step inside, mister. Sure, it would be easier to transact business inside. Sit right down there at the table. Oh, thanks. I thought I'd find Scobie and the breed here. Aren't they the ones who wanted the cash? Never mind Scooby and the breed. What's your business? Millie, uh, didn't you say the price was $2,000? Maybe I don't remember what I said. Well, I have a sack in my pocket. Here it is. I'll empty it. What? Hey, gold eagles. Count it, Peabody. Make sure there's $2,000 there. Then give me a receipt for it. I don't want Red to think I held out. $2,000? Just that's just the amount of gold that was taken in on Shut up. Where'd you get this? What's the difference? I ask a question and I want an answer. Keep your hands right on the table. You think that gun will make me talk? I've got more than this gun to persuade you to talk. Breed, Scurvy, come in here. We've got some work to do. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger went to Jake Peabody's home in disguise, he carried $2,000 in gold as part of a plan to trap the partners of Red Fabian. But Peabody planned to double-cross Fabian. Scurvy, you and Breed heard everything we said. Yeah, sure thing, boss. Me yeah, and Breed was right in the next room, holding our guns handy, in case you had trouble with the visitor. Take his gun. Right. What do you think you're going to do, Peabody? You're going to tell me where you got $2,000 in gold. That cash is to pay Breed and Scooby for breaking Fabian out of jail. I want to know where it came from. Fabian told your sister he'd show you his hiding place for all the loot after he was free. This came from his hiding place, didn't it? I didn't say so. <laughs> you didn't need to. He checks for the amount of gold he had there. There's a lot of other stuff in that same place. That should make it worthwhile helping Fabian. He can't divide the loot while he's in jail. I'll take care of dividing it. You just tell me where it is. What makes you think I know where it is? You know. Fabian couldn't have gotten to his hiding place. So he had to tell you where it is. Now start talking. And if I don't... That's what happens if you don't. And that's just a starter. Be careful, Scobie. Don't use your fist. Use your open hand. We don't want to knock him out so he can't talk. Uh, I said, boss. How's this? Scobie! I... I suppose I should have suspected that you would double-cross Fabian. Where's that hiding place? You heard what the boss said? Start talking! Not wholly unconscious, the Lone Ranger was vaguely aware of being lifted from the floor and placed in a bent wood chair. Then a stinging slap landed on the side of his face. He opened his eyes. You're awake, huh? Good. Now we'll teach you to talk when you're told to. The Lone Ranger knew that resistance would be futile and might provoke gunplay. Moreover, he knew that the success of his play lay in keeping silent, so Peabody and his pals would have to go for Fabian to learn the secret of the hiding place. I'll loosen your tongue. I'll loosen your teeth. Talk. Do you hear me? Talk. Jake. Jake, that's enough. Be quiet. You get tired, boss. I'll take over. There was an almost overwhelming temptation to bring an end to the rain of blows by telling the whole story. All of the Lone Ranger's will, power, and courage were needed to maintain silence. Finally, Jake called an end to the punishment. That's enough. He won't talk. Now, what'll we do, boss? Tie him up and throw him on the floor of the saddle shed. You and Breed go get Red Fabian. Bust him out of jail? Yeah. I don't think there'll be a guard there at night. If there is, take care of the guard. Slug him. But bring Fabian here. We'll make him talk. He'll tell where he's hidden the loot. Bound hand and foot, the Lone Ranger lay on the floor of a shed near the house. In the moonlight beyond the open door, he saw Jake Peabody and Millie watch while Breed and Scobie mounted their horses and rode away. Then Jake turned to his sister. Millie, you follow those two. Follow them? To town? Yeah, I don't trust them. Might team up with Red. Might dig up the loot and clear out on us. You stay out of sight, but keep an eye on them. If they don't come back here, find out where they go and let me know. But, Jake, why don't you follow them? And give you a chance to free the jet in the saddle shed. Oh, Jake. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you. You looked at him kind of soft. You're just like Red. You don't trust anyone either, do you, Jake? Not if I can help it. Now get after breeding Scobie. Scobie. Sheriff Jackson had acted on the suggestion brought by Tonto because there was nothing to lose and there was a chance to capture Fabian's pals and recover stolen goods. With Tonto and a deputy, the sheriff watched the unguarded jail from a nearby place of concealment. Presently, two men left their horses a hundred yards away and walked to the barred window of Fabian's cell. Tonto, looks like your friend had the right idea. Uh -huh. Them two got saw. They're working in the bars. Get ready to travel, Joe. As soon as they get Fabian out of jail, we'll follow him. Gotcha. Fifteen minutes later, three crooks rode out of town, leaving behind an empty jail. Toto and two lawmen followed, not knowing that they in turn were watched and followed by Millie. In the stable of the bankers, Silver had been restless all evening. He seemed to sense that his master was in danger. He wanted to be free to hurry to the Lone Ranger. He whinnied, pawed the floor, and tugged at the halter. His complaints kept Thornton Hobbs awake. Finally, the banker got out of bed and dressed. He donned his white Stetson, then strapped on the gun belt and the ivory-handled Colts that he held as security. He looked in the mirror admiringly, then went to the stable. Hey, now, Silver, old boy. 
Yeah, that's what I call you. I wish you were mine to keep. Silver became docile as the banker stroked his neck and ran fingers through his mane. I'd like to try to ride you, Silver, but you're a lot of horse. You seem peaceful, though. Uh, I guess you like me, huh? Uh, Well, I might try saddling you. I'll do it. Silver was on his best behavior, standing almost motionless. His eyes followed the banker as Hobbs swung the saddle into place. Silver didn't carry strangers, but tonight was different. He wanted to get out of the stable. He did everything to impress the man who wore his master's guns, even opened his mouth to receive the bit, and Hobbs was delighted. Nice horse. Fine boy. Yes, indeed. Now, Silver, now we'll go outside. Come on. Now, steady, boy. There. Now, then... Hobbs nearly spilled backwards when Silver started out to dash across the plains like a streak of white flame. The banker was a good horseman. He stayed in the saddle, but he had no control of the powerful stallion. Silver was on his own. Time dragged for the helplessly tied Lone Ranger. Periodically, Jake Peabody came through the door of the saddle shed to make certain the ropes had not been loosened. He was there for the fourth time. It's still plenty tight. I guess you're not going to get loose. You should have talked when you had the chance. Should I? Yeah, it would have been easier for you. you know, someone coming. Sounds like the horse your sister rode. Whoa, whoa there, whoa. Jake, Jake. Hey, Melly, anything wrong? Everything steady, easy. Hey, did the boys get Fabian out of jail? Yeah, and I heard the talk. Fabian didn't send that man with the gold. He didn't? Then how did Jake, he... let me talk. Save the questions. When Red heard about him, he said he was going to see if the loot had been found. I was just about to follow when I saw three others start out to follow Fabian, Breed, and Scobie. Three others? The sheriff, his deputy, and an Indian. Fabian goes to see if his hiding place was found. He leads the law to the place. That's what happened. I saw the whole thing. The law closed in. All three of the boys were captured, and all the stuff we collected was found. Well, why didn't you do something? What could I do? I didn't have a gun. But I'll get one now. You and I can cut back and intercept the sheriff on his way to town. Sell yourself a horse while I get done. I suppose you're gloating over this. Think so, Peabody? We'll deal with you when we get back. Ready, Jake? Yeah, where do we go? Straight to the trail between town and Red Rocks. We'll get there before the law and lie and wait. Get up, get up there. The Lone Ranger was helpless, but he renewed his efforts to get free of the strong ropes. He knew that his plan was going to misfire, that Jake and his sister would open fire from ambush and cut down the sheriff, a deputy, and Toto. Three men to die because of my suggestion. He strained and pulled until the ropes cut into his wrists, and he accomplished nothing. It meant little that his own life would probably be taken. It was the lives of others that concerned him. Then he heard the distant beat of hoofs. What? It was a familiar rhythm. He listened. Can't be... Can't be. But it did sound like the strides of the mighty silver. Then in the moonlight he could see the horse, and it was snow white. It was reaching with tremendous strides. The mane and tail were like plumes streaming in the wind. It is. It's silver. Silver! Silver, old boy! Oh, my. Oh, what a ride. I'd better get down. Hobbs, oh. come here and cut me loose. Huh? What, what? Cut these ropes, I tell you. It's you, the owner of that horse. Three lives are at stake. Bewildered and confused, the banker was finally persuaded to free the Lone Ranger. Now I'll need those guns and that horse. But, but their security. I can't waste more time arguing. Say. The Lone Ranger helped himself to his gun belt, then took a mask from beneath his shirt. As he was fitting it across his eyes, he heard the banker behind his back complaining. You, you can't take that horse, those guns. You posted them security. How do you like my horse? Oh, my. I felt just as if I were riding the horse of the Lone Ranger. You were. What? Now you've put on a mask. He's a big foot. Silver. He called it silver. I was on the horse of the Lone Ranger. Yippee! The sheriff was accompanied by Joe and Toto as he brought his prisoners back to town along the trail from Red Rocks. He felt good. He not only had two more crooks to jail with Red Fabian and a lot of recovered loot... He also had confidence that Scobie or Breed could be persuaded to incriminate the rest of the gang. Yeah, they're yellow all through. 
They'll talk their heads off in the hope of getting a lighter sentence. I reckon you're right, Sheriff. Hold it! Over there, behind that rock. Get ambushed. Man behind rock. You're covered. Keep your hands up. We'll cut you down. It's Jake. I'll cut those ropes, boy. And Millie. Get the three of us loose, Millie. Hurry, Hurry, Millie. Millie Peabody. So you and your brother are working with the gang. That's right, Lord Dog. Come on, hurry. You're not going to do a thing about it. Boys, as soon as Millie cuts you free, take the ropes and tie the two lawmen that redskin. Jake covered Tonto and the two lawmen while Millie started work on the ropes of the first prisoner. Before she could free the man, the sound of fast hoofbeats came from across the plain. Someone else is coming. Jake, who is that? What? There he comes. I'll deal with him. Now we move. As Jake turned to fire at the man who came from behind him, both Tonto and the sheriff leaped into action, and the deputy grabbed Millie. Let go, let me go. No, you go. don't. I'll take that knife. Get him up, Jake. Ice your hands or I'll throw lead. Hey, that man's masked. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. My hands are up. Get the mask man, Sheriff. He's all right, Joe. He's Tonto's friend. That does it, Sheriff. Now you have them all. That voice. You... You're the man I left Yes, right. Jake. Oh, Easy, silly you. big fella. You left me in the saddle shed after giving me a beating. This is when I should square things with you, Breed and Scooby. No, 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 don't, 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 don't hit me. Don't hit no more. No, no, I won't hit you. I'll let the law punish you. You'll get plenty of punishment. Sheriff, if you can handle these five prisoners, I'll get back to the Peabody Ranch. Why do you got to go there? <laughs> I don't want Banker Hobbs to worry. About a matter of collateral. <laughs> Easy, big fella. I'll see you later, Tonto. Uh-huh. Come on, This is a big night for Banker Hobbs. He'll never stop telling about the time he helped the Lone Ranger. No, 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 no. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 